Hello and welcome to the channel. Uh, today, a quick video about uh, using Tailwind uh, with a Closure Backend. Uh, so, uh, I'm usually using a Hiccup library uh, to write um, a HTML components. And um, it looks something like this. So, we have like a DSL enclosure. And then you can provide uh, class names for the CSS. And uh, I've been using Tailwind for, for a while, but uh, to be fair, I was quite lazy and I was always using a non-recommended way. Uh, I just used a CDN link and included uh, the entire uh, package. Uh, the problem is that um, it's not really recommended for production. It has a bigger file size and it's um, hard to customize. So I spent a bit of time trying to understand how to how easy um, it is to use it properly. And I was really surprised and um, in a good way because basically it's not harder than using it in uh, JavaScript backend. Um, so um, if you want to start uh, from the beginning, you will need to install uh, Tailwind uh, locally. So the one way of doing that is just to use brew uh, install Tailwind CSS, and in in this case it will install um, a standalone uh, CLI tool. Uh, the other way is to use npm for that, uh, but usually when I have a closure project, I don't have any uh, Node uh, packages there, so I uh, just use standalone to keep uh, keep the the structure clear uh, clear. Um, so the Tailwind uh, CLI will be responsible for parsing our um, source files of our project and discovering the um, CSS uh, Tailwind classes. And um, it really, you know, like uh, language agnostic because uh, as I understand, it just looks for the uh, exact matches for the string literals. Uh, so if you have a class name, that's recognized by Tailwind, uh, it will work. Uh, one small caveat is that if you um, doing something really uh, custom, like a dynamic class names, so for example, I don't know, uh, building a string of, uh, um, let's say, background um, red, and then here you have a condition, something like if true, um, let's say 500, if not 400, uh, 400. In that case, uh, Tailwind won't be able to recognize that it is a, a Tailwind class that it needs to uh, add to their final uh, fol uh, file. Uh, in that case, uh, you just keep, in, keep that in mind. And if you have a use case like that, there's a workaround because you can just use the safe list and then you can add uh, basically hard code, all classes, additional classes that you need. But uh, usually if you just use a full uh, class names uh, in some way, uh, it will just work. So um, to initialize your project, you usually do something like uh, tailwind uh, CSS init, and then um, it will basically just create a Tailwind config.js file. Uh, it will be almost empty. Um, and then for our closure, closure project, uh, the only thing you need to configure is this line. It's basically a regex to discover which files to parse and to search for um, ta Tailwind classes. So in my case, it's just CLJ. Uh, for convenience, if we'll have CLJS and CLJC later, I just added that. Uh, if you have, uh, for example, resources with static HTML that you want to include, you can add an extra line here, something like dot resources, um, something HTML um, that will work as well. And um, uh, the other thing is is this input CSS. Uh, you'll just need these three lines. Um, and here I just added custom font, but we'll cover that a bit later. Uh, so these three lines. And after that, uh, you're kind of ready to run and build um, uh, your uh, uh, CSS output file. So in my case, it's here. I ignored it in, in uh, Git because it's supposed to be 
created when I create Docker image, and we'll take a look at that later. Uh, so for now, let's just remove the file, uh, rerun uh, the REPL, uh, reload, uh, and you see we have no styling at all. Um, in uh, my task runners, I use Babashka. I added three commands uh, related to Tailwind, and uh, one is build, watch, and minify. So uh, if I do bb uh, tailwind build, uh, it will parse my files and it will generate the output CSS file. Uh, as you can see now, uh, it's uh, here again. And uh, if I reload uh, the REPL, refresh the page, we have some style now. Um, if we want uh, in development, uh, build is not convenient, but we can do uh, watch instead. So if I do uh, tail wind uh, watch, it will start the build, but in watch mode. So if I add something, uh, it will regenerate the file for me. So let's say uh, I have this red text here. Let's change it to green. Um, now it should, yeah, as, as you can see, it rebuilded the file. Uh, now I reload the REPL, refresh the page, and it changed. Right, so that's the workflow. Um, with this approach, it's quite easy to do custom customizations. Uh, so in my case, I tried a custom font family. For that, uh, the only thing you need to do is to import it. I'm using like a free Google uh, font. Uh, add it as an import to the, your input CSS file and then uh, in the theme, um, set the font family um, to be this one, should be like default. Uh, and also, for example, here I just played a bit with setting the container size to to have the same size in all screens. But yeah, you basically now uh, can do any uh, customization to Tailwind as you would normally do it in with a JavaScript backend. And um, yeah, the last thing probably, uh, yeah, so... I now just import this assets file that's generated for me uh, instead of the CDN uh, link to Tailwind, and that works. Uh, and in um, uh, real Docker image, I added a um, uh, separate step. So the entire build here in, in Docker is multi-stage Docker build. Uh, so it was, uh, first one is using the uh, closure line uh, base image to build the uber jar and then the uber jar is copied into the runtime image which is just uh, java 21 uh, on alpine linux um, and i'm copying the uh, uber jar and just running that with java uh, now there is a one more uh, step which is called tailwind bind, uh, builder and uh, you basically just download the uh, Tailwind CLI from the GitHub releases and uh, do some, uh, like make it executable, uh, move it to some other folder, and then you basically run the build uh, with minify option. So it will generate a minified output CSS file. And then before you build the Uber jar, it is copied from the previous step, uh, so we'll have a CSS file in our resources uh, that's packaged into um, uh, final Ubuntu. And that's uh, kind of it. So I can... Um, th there is a command also in uh, bbedn for the uh, local image build. So I can do bb uh, bb docker build and it will just run the process for me generating the css file and building the final oop jar um so yeah th that's it and uh this is uh, my closure service template i have a separate video for that and now this uh, tailwind uh, uh, related feature is merged so you can use the template it's in pretty good state now uh, and you'll have that the the nice uh, tailwind pre-configured
Uh, thanks for watching and let me know what you think um, and see you next video. Bye bye.